Welcome back, Much Music. Today, I'm joined by the legend, Rez. Rez, how are you? I'm fantastic. So today, we're doing an ABC interview, which is 26 questions. You can answer it however long and however short you want to. Okay. We're gonna start with A, animal you most resemble. For some reason, the first thing that came to mind was Zabumafu. Do you know who Zabumafu is? Yes. Like, I don't even know if I resemble Zabumafu, but that was the first thing that came to mind, so that's gonna be my answer. B, be a dreamer or a realist? Dreamer, for sure. Yeah? yeah? Anyone could say that it's like unrealistic to become successful. Country you wanna perform in? I actually just love performing in the US and Canada, honestly, the most. Really? Um, yeah, I do. Wow, yeah. okay. I really enjoy that. Do you enjoy playing shows? all across the world, of course, and really grateful for it. But um, I do really enjoy like the easy travel and staying on my time zone. Like when I'm in the, the time zone that I'm used to, I find that it's like easier for me to sort of take care of myself, right? you know, and therefore have a great time. Because yeah. Of... Documentary or autobiography about your life? Documentary for sure. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, just follow you along? Yeah, I think so, yeah. What do you think would be like a moment in your career where you would have loved for it to be like documented, where you're like, like was it right at the beginning when you were starting? That would've been cool. I think it would be interesting to see the highs and the lows all together. So it wouldn't necessarily be just at the start. It would mm. also be encapsulating the moments that I have struggled as well with like dealing with anxiety and stuff like that it would have to like really encapsulate all of that together I think like the realness of like being yeah an artist yeah it would it would really need to show the true the true full story as opposed to just the highlights you know early morning or night owl oh night owl I didn't yeah. even I just have to get that out like so so quickly night owl yeah night I, owl? I can't stand early mornings like I truly can't stand them First concert you attended? In St. Catharines, I, I grew up in Niagara Falls. And oh, nice. In St. Catharines, there was this thing called Scene Fest. Okay. And I'm pretty positive like that was my first experience with concerts. G for ghosts, do you believe in them? Um, I actually personally don't really. Mm. I don't think. Okay. At least not for me. Yeah. The thing is, is if I believe that if you believe in them, then I'm not saying they're not objectively not real. Right. So I don't believe in them. And therefore, because I haven't really experienced any encounters myself. Right. But if you believe them, I, I believe that you can encounter stuff like that. I see what you, you know mean. What I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see so, what you mean. Yeah, it's just not super relevant to my life. Right. Yeah. It's like if it's for you, then you're going to see it or like whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. I completely. just, yeah, I haven't had any sort of paranormal activity stuff happen. Or... Let's keep, let's keep it that way. H for horoscope sign. What is yours? I'm Aries. You're an Aries. Do you yeah. feel like you connect with those like little thing? Like, you know, those little, little graphics it's like Aries are this. I find that the descriptions for all of them are, are quite uh, broad. So I think yep. a lot of people could. That's what I'm saying. I think a lot of people could find ways to sort of put themselves in any box based yeah. off the you know, yeah. the, you know what I mean? So that's exactly how I feel about them. I'm like yeah. swiping sometimes. I'm like, oh, like I'm a Sagittarius, but I'm like, yeah. I can relate to a Pisces and then I can relate to a Leo. And I'm like, oh, wait. For sure. There's certain, there's certain things about Aries that I do feel are appropriate descriptions of me. Right. But then again, I could look at a ton of them and be like, oh, well, I'm also this and also that and whatever. You know what I mean? So I I'm totally not, I'm feel not you. super. Yeah. Yeah. Just a fun question. We like that. Cause sometimes some artists are really into it and I'm mm. like, <laughs> I'm like, huh? Like it's just interesting. Yeah. Inspirations in your life. I have many. Um, there's so many different ways that I can be inspired by people. I'm actually super inspired by my mom. I know that's like, I, I feel like I don't give it enough. I don't say that enough. So mm -hmm. I want to say it in this one. My mom definitely inspires me a lot. She's very easily pleased and very easily happy. Like there's oh. not, she doesn't require a lot to be happy. Right. Um, very satisfied by just, you know, having like just, just a few things. She, she doesn't desire a lot and she doesn't desire like, oh, but I just want this or I just want this. It's like, no, I'm actually really happy with my life and I'm really happy chilling with, she has a bunch of like a few dogs. Yeah. She's like, I'm very happy just hanging out with my dogs at home and walking the dogs and, you know, taking a bath or watching TV or watching her favorite shows. And like it's just- simple pleasures it's, in life. It's simple and, it, and she's genuinely happy and never complains and uh, works a lot and never complains about work and is never complaining about being tired. And, you know, I can just, there's a lot of things I can be inspired by by her, and I, I really hope that as I continue to get older, I hope that I adopt those qualities because, yeah, it's it's proven to be one of my biggest inspirations. She's always inspired me, but I feel like I realize it more now. 
job you would have if you were not an artist? Um, I'm actually really into hair, like hair, but specifically men's hair. Oh, okay. um, I grew up, like I wanted to be a barber. I, I have always, I actually used to cut all my guy friends hair, like in high school and stuff like that. Oh, so interesting. So it's something that I'm interested in still um, and would like to actually learn how to properly do because I, I never learned how to properly do it. I was just cutting their hair how I felt, like how however I assumed, you know right. what I mean? And of course, they liked it because it wasn't super like straight cut. You know when you get a haircut at first and like, especially guys, some of their, their haircuts are end up being too kind of straight looking where, right. you know, straight across, back, whatever, I don't know, something that, and I kind of was really good at making it look messy and making it look like they didn't just get a fresh cut and it looked like sort of like more, lived in. Yeah, lived in. Exactly. Yeah. It looked more lived in. And so that's one thing that I think I would do. Um, and probably honestly still might like look into learning for fun. Like honestly, yeah. I, ha I have this hair mitt, like this mannequin in my house, uh, just like a head of hair. That's so that cool. I, that I've like cut a few, yeah, like cut it a few times and like styled it differently and stuff like that. That's one thing I would do. Um, and That's aside, so fascinating to me. That's so cool. Thank you. I appreciate that. And then aside from that, um, if I didn't have that as an answer, I would try a bunch of things and see what, you know what I mean? Try new things and see what I found interest in and just kind of like test it, test the waters and see what, what works, I guess. A karaoke song, do you have one? Do you sing ever? Car no, <laughs> definitely not, honestly. <laughs> when me and my friends went to karaoke not even too long ago, I found myself just sitting in silence while they were all singing. It makes me a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. However, in this new track of mine though, um, there's this new track of mine called Can You See Me on my new album, and I actually used my vocal on it. It's not singing. Oh, nice. It's more like creepy ghost whispers, kind of, but Nonetheless, it's my voice on it. So that's like my vocal debut. <laughs> I love that. That's just like, you're like in the middle of the night, you're like, hello. No, seriously, <laughs> it's basically what's like all ASMR. Like. <laughs> Lesson you've learned recently. Oh, wow. I almost, w I wish I like knew about this early so I can give the perfect oh, answer. Yeah. Lesson I've learned recently. I mean, not super, not super recent as in the last month or so, but I have definitely learned the lesson time and time again that overly touring and overly working, burning myself out mm -hmm. and learning the importance that if I if I can do my best to really, really put my mental sanity first and put my health first right. above working, above, you know, making all this extra money and all this stuff, you know what I mean? Like I have right. what I need. Yeah. Um, I have more than what I need. Right. And so therefore, that being said, I think just the importance of balance and the importance of not overworking myself if I have the choice. And and that would probably be my, my lesson that I have been learning time and time again throughout my 20s. Well, you actually <laughs> led me right to my next question, which was M for mental reset. How do you sometimes realign yourself? Like, what do you do? What does Rez do? Um, definitely a lot of chilling, sort of laying down or chilling with my fiance or chilling with my dog, our dog, yeah. sorry, <laughs> our dog. Like my dog. It's, it's literally her dog. <laughs> like she brought the dog into, into our life. So it's funny me saying like, out, like taking it as mine. Now. Yeah. Like, he he like is my dog. dog as well now. But um, chilling with, yeah, chilling with Sid and chilling with uh, our dog and sort of disconnecting and watching a movie or watching a, sh a TV show that's sort of requires little to no, you don't have yeah. to really pay too much attention. What are your go-to shows? Do you have any? We, we really like to watch those hilarious love love shows, like, like um, you know, Love Island and Love is Blind. And oh my gosh. Stuff like that is so yeah. funny. It's like, funny. it's so funny to watch that. Um, there's so many of those that's yeah. like on Netflix and stuff like that. There's tons of things to watch. I love watching horror movies. Nothing compares to watching horror movies, but. To relax? Yes. To absolutely. unwind? Yeah, for me, I love that. <laughs> it, it does make me feel relaxed. Cause it's, it's just, it actually makes me relax even more because it's like, oh, I'm not in that situation. At True. Least. I'm not being chased by Samara from the ring. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, I'm more relaxed knowing that Samara is not going around Going through me. it. Yeah, yeah Samara's exactly. going through it. Exactly. <laughs> You're like, dang. Yeah, I really enjoy to do that. And um, what else do I like to do? Um, my favorite thing is just waking up and making uh, a coffee or tea and, and, and making my own breakfast, ordering my own groceries and making my food items and that all is relaxing to me because it's just it's just it's all it's all in my own home right. you know what i mean and just being at home is relaxing to me new base era i know is your kind of like 
future sound or like your sound kind of coming out now. Yeah, exactly. What does that mean? Oh, I am just so deliriously excited about this. I have actually always found inspiration from bass music from a really long time. Early inspirations like Zed's Dead, even for example, yeah. like going to concerts, obviously Skrillex as well, but musically Zed's Dead and there's been so many others as well, so many. And I feel like my music in general has been pretty bassy. A lot of people will, uh, have been like, oh, what do you mean your music's already bassy? But it's like, nah, this is a little Take bit to different. The next level. <laughs> this is a little bit different. This is a little bit heavier. It's a different BPM. It's a different pace. Uh, it's definitely uh, stuff that's going to go down really well in a live setting. Um, music that kind of will really capture the attention at a concert. Like, whoa, what is this? <laughs> Oddest place you've performed. Hottest place I've performed? Oddest place you've performed. Like the weirdest, like odd. Oh, oddest. oddest. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, I mean, you know what? For me, I'd probably have to say <laughs> the first, I'm just kind of answering based on the first thing that comes to mind. Right. I might have a better answer, but the first thing that comes to mind is when I performed in Bali mm -hmm. because the setting just felt kind of off for me. Yeah. Um, my shows are quite more on the ominous sort of hypnotic, trippier side. My audience is pretty that way. Yeah. And I played in Bali and it was at this like massive pool party. And like, it just kind of felt like people were kind of like, not, yeah. they like were kind of confused. And <laughs> I was just like, oh my God, this is so awkward. I don't think this is like the right set. This is like a setting for like Zed and Martin Garrix and mm. Tiesto. And, and I was just like, maybe this is not for me, but I would say that was kind of odd for me. Performance you're excited for in 2024 because I know you have a lot of cool ones coming up. I'm excited about almost all of my performances in 2024 because I've really uh, been a lot more particular about my selections. Oh, okay. Cool. Um, I'm really particular now about where I play because, like I mentioned earlier, about the whole not wanting to burn myself out. Right. So I'm really excited to play at my Red Rock show. Um, always, always. And Which sold out like super fast. It did. I honestly just. It, it, it's crazy, yeah. it's crazy, it's unbelievable. It, it sold out extremely quickly, like immediately, and then we even put out a, another show at Mission Ballroom um, for a throwback set, and that sold out immediately. I, I just can't really describe how that feels. I'm very, very, very grateful for that. I'm yeah. very excited for that. Um, especially to play out all this new music at, at shows like that. I'm really excited about all the, all the uh, performances, at all the festivals coming up. Um, it's funny, because I can't really think of them off the top of my head right now, like the titles to each festival, but Every There's festival. one in tom Tomorrowland. Oh, to that's a good, yeah, that's a great point. Performing with the literal person who inspired me to create music more than anyone, which is Dead Mouse. Um, yeah, that's unbelievable. We're closing out the state, one of the stages at like, Tomorrowland, the what? one, which is really awesome too, because there's multiple stages at Tomorrowland, but the, the stage that we're closing out has like a massive wall, like a massive screen, you know, which is perfect because the actual main stage at Tomorrowland doesn't have that mm -hmm. so because it's more you know the whole thing you know the big, it's more yeah, yeah, yeah. Stage, right? but this the stage we're performing at is still completely massive and has a massive led wall so it allows for you know so many cool like crazy visuals. Yeah, visuals yeah i'm so excited for that one as well question you want to ask your older self any question i guess i would just say do i just continue down this this path that i'm going right now like what like i don't even know what i would ask myself cuz it just it it truly does feel like right now is is peak right. you know i feel like i would i would ask myself something in the future if i had something going wrong right now and i'd be uh. like what do i do to like how can i get through this but at this exact moment it just doesn't feel like there's um obstacles that are really I'm not looking for like answers, yeah. I suppose. Well, you know? I'm, I'm just asking myself if I still have hair. Uh -oh. Like, I wanna know if I went bald or not. <laughs> oh, so it doesn't have to be that deep, okay. <laughs> risk you've taken recently? I really did feel like I, some people would disagree with this, but I really feel like I did take a risk when I released my last uh, EP. When oh, yeah? I released my last EP, with it being all vocal songs and being sort of like a punk, a more punk aesthetic as opposed to like EDM aesthetic, I, I really do feel like that was a risk. I think some people would disagree and be like, oh no, it still sounded like you and stuff like that. But I believe it was a risk. Um, I felt, I feel that way. Something you haven't tried but would love to. You know what? I haven't been skiing or snowboarding, which I find is really wild because I really, I've always really liked, I've never been good at skateboarding or yeah. anything like that, but I've always really liked stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I feel like I would love snowboarding. I feel like if I did it, I'd be like, wow, this is so fun. And okay, but why do I want to see you in the snowboarding outfit, but with your goggles on? Oh my God. <laughs> like, why do I feel like that would be the sickest? Like you would, you would blow up Instagram if you posted that. <laughs> I would love to do that. That would be fun, honestly. You get like custom made like goggles. 
Tiny studio must-haves. Like you must have these in your tiny studio. Uh, I've actually been collecting these um, new action figures that are cool. all horror, like horror movie type stuff. So I, I got It the Clown just today. And I also got um, Hellraiser. They're these like, just very cool um, action figures I'm obsessed with. So I've been decorating my studio with like a bunch of stuff like that. A bunch of creepy stuff, de just creepy decoration. I got this like I crazy Medusa head that's like sort of the centerpiece of my studio in terms mm. of decoration. Um, and the lighting is the most important part in the studio because you want to have it be creepy and red and right. whatever. I like to like I like to have moody lighting in there. Well, I saw that video of like the LED sign and it's oh, like yeah. red and I was like, that's so cool. Yeah, for sure. It, yeah, that's I, I like I like basically anything that contributes to a creepy aesthetic into the studio is is the key for me for sure. You just need to be like in a horror movie. Basically, I need to be. Yeah, I need to be. It needs to look creepy in there. It just inspires I love that. me. Yeah, it's usually super inspires people like. Me go the opposite route. They're like, I need a forest in my studio. Oh, I see what you mean. I, I, that's, that's really cool that's though, that's the, interesting. That's sort of the vibe of my bedroom is more mm. like a nature-y, a little bit. There's like some fake leaves and stuff like, <laughs> it's made, you know, whatever, fake plant. That that That's for sure great in the bedroom, but for my studio, yeah. Like, it, yeah, cool. It has to be so moody in there and creepy and I love it. That's yeah. so cool. Upcoming album, Can You See Me? What was the best memory while making it? Um, the best memory of it was making the track, that the title track called Can You See Me? Mm. So the album's called that and then there's a, there's a track called that. And when I was making that track, I, I, I mentioned earlier that it's my first time using my vocal in it. And there's this one specific part of the track that is just so crazy and different from what I usually do. It's just a lot faster and just sounds so chaotic and very, I can't even really describe it. You'll have to hear it when it comes out, but there's something about this part of this track that is just so, I felt so connected to it and how crazy it was. It really like unlocked this part of my brain. The, the thing is, is as an artist, you you find ways to get, in, like there's so many things you can be inspired by. Horror movies, um, creepy alleyways. I have these images in my head, even movies like Requiem for a Dream, where mm. it's like a drug related movie and like, you know, the guy's super addicted to heroin and stuff like that. And the way that that movie made me feel, right? It, it, the thing about being an artist and whatever, musician, whatever you want to call it, is finding and, and taking those influences and like how things make you feel and then putting it into your art. And I feel right. like this song for me is so, that, you know? And I think when I made this particular second drop or whatever you want to call it in the track, it was just like, this is what I want to be making. This is the vibe that I want, that I want people to remember me for. Right. And, and um, you were having like a beautiful mind moment. Oh yeah. You were I, like, mean, like... I was just like, this is, I, I felt amazing making yeah. that track and in and, and all the tracks as well on the, on the album. But this track for me was just, yeah, it just, it's, it was so fun to make. And like, it came together like a perfect puzzle. And yeah. I was like, yes. And this like, is the perfect tease by the way. Cause I'm getting all like giddy right now. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. The second drop. I'm like, yeah, let's drop. go. <laughs> Cause the now, second drop, you're like the second drop. You're like not even gonna listen to the track. You're just gonna zoom right to the second drop. It's <laughs> yeah, like, I'm like, where at is like it? like one minute and like 24 <laughs> seconds. Like, yeah, I don't remember where exactly. I'm gonna be it looking is. at the little peaks. I'm like, okay, first drop, it's and just, I'm like, second drop. Yeah, making that track just for me, it, for me, it really just encapsulates the style that I want nice. to do, you yeah. know, and the feeling that I want my music to give off, which is just. It's just absolutely chaos in this one moment. And it just Perfect. feels so climactic. And yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna have to give that as the answer. Perfect, mm -hmm. I love that. Valuable advice for Verda, I'm Verda. <laughs> <laughs> Valuable <laughs> advice? In what context? Just any, give me anything. <laughs> I always need advice, so. <laughs> I'm that, Well, give I'm me at girl. least a topic to give advice mm. on. Relationships, anything. Ooh. Yeah, give me a relationship advice. Okay, then. that's easy because I'm in literally the best relationship in You're the world. You're a guru? I'm in the I'm no, I'm in the best relationship right now. Like I'm with with my partner, right. like genuinely. Yeah. And and it's really easy for me to give advice because it's like literally do not like this is so cliche, do not settle for like anything less. But you know, literally it's so incredible having a partner that we just literally vibe every day and mm -hmm. it, unproblematic, never arguing. Someone that literally makes me feel only good feelings and we just benef benefit each other's lives so much and 
just don't cause any problems. There's no drama. There's nothing like that. It's not toxic and, where you're like constantly yeah. like I hate relationships. Oh like yeah, that. nothing, nothing, nothing even close. Yeah. And um, it's just so important that you and everyone else just re remembers to like never waste your time with like anything less than that because it's just like just be single. <laughs> like just be single if you're if you're not going to have a partner that's like the best ever. For a woman in dance music, how does it feel to be one of the greatest? And how does it feel like, how would you like to kind of have the industry move forward? First of all, I really appreciate you saying that. That's really awesome. Of course. Um, it's really, it's been really awesome to see a lot of women actually. Uh, there's been tons, you know, if you were to ask me about eight years ago even about it, I would have had a much different answer because then there actually truly wasn't that many women there in particularly yeah. electronic dance music. There right. were, there were, but there weren't um, as many on the, on the spotlight, in the spotlight, right. you know what I mean? Like right. headliners and, yeah. or, you know, really getting that attention, you know? But it's been really cool because honestly, since then, there's been plenty, there's tons. And I see so many new ones coming up all the time. New I love women. that. All the time I see new new women DJs, producers, whatever. Every every day I'm like, oh, new one there, new one there. There's tons now and there's going to be more. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think they're just needed to, people just needed to like do it. <laughs> yeah. and, and just, you know, get involved in that and make music and ignore the, like ignore the people that are like haters, you know, it's inevitable. Right. It's inevitable, no matter what. It, like for sure I noticed, you know, I felt like I had a pretty decent uh, experience with being a woman in the industry for the for the better part of my career. I've had a pretty decent experience myself personally. I'm aware that's not the case for most people. A lot of people, yeah. Most people, yeah. <clears throat> but I did have a pretty decent experience with it. However, I definitely still notice, especially lately, I like notice sometimes like some people, yeah, some people are truly just s hate women. <laughs> you <laughs> some know what? Hate women. Yeah. <laughs> and and it's 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 true and they, you know, no matter what, how many times I win, you know, no matter how many times I do things, crazy things, perform with people like Dead Mouse, sell out the biggest venues in America, um, you know, the list literally goes on. There's always gonna be certain men that go, well, it, that's because this person did that for her or because this other person carried the song that she was on or because this person did that or this they never want to give the credit the where credit it's where due. it's due ever and no i've noticed it, that too it's something it's something that i really realized for some reason i think for a while i was so busy all the time that i almost wasn't noticing that stuff i was like nah like i'm i'm successful i'm really doing well so i'm not really noticing the haters that much you know but for some reason, I, for some reason, I've been paying more attention a little bit, mm. and I've been seeing it more. Where I'm like, oh wow, yeah. there's some people who will refuse to uh, really just allow, like, j just respect, give the respect where it's due. You know, right. and I'm not new. I'm not new here anymore. I've been here for ten years now, and and been doing closing out festivals at this point I kind of demand the respect you know what I mean right and so when I see random comments here and there of these men kind of it's always men <laughs> being I don't like, feel like girls hate on each other when it's like a crazy big thing like that yeah I, like, I mean in an industry I, I'm, breaking in I'm sure it happens here or there but yeah. I, I, I have certainly noticed that majority of the time it is men and I'm sure this is the thing that a lot of women most women will be able to relate to with what I'm saying is that there's always some man that's like probably a DJ in you know in his hometown that didn't quite make it to where he wanted mm. and he is so angry to see a woman popping like that yeah. you know what I mean they're yeah. like no way this girl could has it. what I want right you know what I mean yeah. and 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 yeah that's something I noticed they just they won't really they have a hard time giving and just just to be just to be I notice a lot of people do give the respect to people mm -hmm. to, to women. Mm -hmm. Let me just get that clear. It's mm -hmm. not everyone. There's no. actually I want to say the majority of people do give give respect, uh, and, and I want to mention that as well because it's certainly I, I do feel a lot of that. But yeah. I do want to also say that yeah, there's a there are there is a demographic of people, and it is typically men who. Yeah, they're very they're very salty and, and bitter about it, you know. And it's, it's like it's, go home, go to sleep, <laughs> do something better with your life. Yeah, so that's something that's something that's undeniable. And a right. lot, and, and you know what? I think because I the reason I think I'm also very like more fortunate in this regard is how I dress and stuff like that. It's a very androgynous look, and and because of that, I think uh, it, it automatically makes people I think take me a little bit more seriously. However, if I was 
a girl that was wearing different, uh, you know, whatever cl- clothing that was. In my pigtails. It, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, whatever. <laughs> more, I find that the reason why, one of the reasons that I've gotten a little bit lucky with it yeah. is that some people don't even know I'm a girl. I actually made a post about it on my Instagram, not, like, not too long ago, because I actually, there's been people who don't know that I'm a girl, and they, they misgender me. They think that they go, like, uh, they refer to me as a he by accident. Because right. the, the thing is, is, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a lanky, you know, I'm not, like, I'm kind of just, you can't really tell. I'm not wearing, like, any clothing. But then clothes. when you also have your goggles on, yes, it's exactly. kind of harder to yes, tell sometimes. Yes, exactly too. my point. I also wear these glasses that take up, like, half my face. So I'm not surprised that some people don't know that I'm a girl, right? right. But, but my point being is that I think that aspect of it has also benefited me in some ways right. because people just I, tend to take me more seriously but that's when I, that's why I think a lot of other women have to deal with it a lot worse mm. because people are just assuming oh this girl like you know looks like this or just like this there's no way she could be like ew uh. yeah, yeah so <laughs> it's yeah so I, I have actually noticed it a lot more mm. uh, in little ways like that you know I could talk to you about this for hours because I am a cover art designer that's kind of how I like started in the music industry too and all of my covers are very like grunge and like they used to be super grunge so when you said a lot of people didn't know that you were a girl I had that too where a lot of people didn't know I was a girl so when they would message me they'd be like hey bro can I get a cover whatever and I was just like yeah okay but like I'm a girl or like I'd get on a phone call with them and they're like is that your girl on the phone I'm like no that was literally me like what (laughs) so crazy yeah but yeah no giving flowers where they're due though Rez isn't like you're amazing and you've crushed it and I think you've paved the way for a lot of people too so I think you do deserve your flowers at this point in your career wow I I honestly really appreciate that it's very nice of you to say seriously I appreciate it thank you I appreciate you appreciating it (laughs) I I really appreciate that yeah (laughs) hearing that's always very nice have you ever had an x-ray yeah um, have you ever broken a bone? No, I actually have never Thank broken God. a bone. I don't think I've had an x-ray before. Uh, oh, actually, yes, I did, actually. I fell off my bike a few years ago, uh, and it was really bad. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> <laughs> I, fell off, I fell off my bike, and um, I, I really messed up my hands, and there was, like, literally rocks, like, deep into my hands and stuff like that, gushing blood. Just you can imagine this in your head. I was biking by myself down this hill, a uh, very dangerous hill, wasn't even wearing a helmet, don't know what I was doing and fell, my hands absolutely demolished, blood gushing down my hands, and I still had to pick my bike up and like walk my bike down this hill and into my car. So now you can imagine there's gushing blood all over my car, all over my steering wheel, sorry. Straight out of a horror movie, <laughs> like, <laughs> you're like, if the clown emerges just... from, the, <laughs> from the floor. If the clown was behind, like, yeah, yeah like, anyways. <laughs> Gushing blood all over the place. Anyways, okay. oh my I, mean, goodness. I should probably just move on to the point. <laughs> so, then, the imagery is like, I love the imagery though. <laughs> then I actually drove myself to the hospital. No yeah, way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, drove myself to the hospital. Are you okay? Gushing blood all over the place. Walking down into the hospital, gushing blood all over the floor. And then uh, they had to get an x-ray on my hand to see in case I um, needed stitches like, or broke oh, something. Like bro- yeah. Well, because my hand was also like I could barely move my hand because oh my I, I like really, I landed everything like all everything like landed on my hand so it was it was bad but turned out that i i did get a quick little x-ray there but it turned out it was it was all good oh my goodness <laughs> yes yeah, so well, i got a scar though but yeah happy to see you here <laughs> okay <laughs> no seriously <laughs> i actually the clown in the background like it, following you home <laughs> no seriously it's, it's actually funny because i barely um barely ri- ride my bike now because of that like i, I think i, I throw I, out my bike after no that. seriously no i've wiped out so many times on my bike there's this other video of me like uh, trying to do a wheelie on my BMX and I and I fully just backwards landed on my tailbone and I think that was like all right two bike incidents I'm done yeah. I'm done You're like it's <laughs> but I, going in the garage and never coming back but out. I love bikes so much so it's like I'll still bike Tough. around I'll still bike around the neighborhood and stuff but I won't go you know I'm not trying to be a mountain biker professional right <laughs> you're doing like flips and stuff yeah <laughs> Why for why did you become an artist? Um, I mean, it was a deep question right before. Yeah, why did I become an artist? I mean, it was kind of crazy because I feel like I didn't, I told you that I, I listened to a bunch of bands and stuff growing up, but nothing ever made me feel like I wanted to be the artist until I got into dance music, right? Mm-hmm. And it was interesting because even as a kid, like I had a little bit of interest in playing instruments, a little bit of interest in trying to play the, the keyboard, a little bit of interest in trying to play the drums and stuff, but like nothing really felt like I wanted to create from scratch till I got into dance music. And immediately when I got into dance music, I just felt all this inspiration, almost like every part of my life 
was inspiring to me and of, of influence to me to create. I don't really know. You know, some people create from their emotions in terms of, oh, I went through this or I went through that and then they write about it, right? For me, it's actually not really like that. It's more like I'm pulling from this part of my brain that all the stuff that I thought was cool growing up. Mm -hmm. uh, I've mentioned this a while ago, but my brother actually has been a super influence on me because when I used to, he used to live in my parents' basement and and that sounds so like, but there was a room in the basement, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> there was a room in my parents' basement when I was a kid. I was like yeah. four years old, five years old. And I'd always, he, I always just thought he was so cool. And I'd be like, like knock on the door, like, can I come downstairs? Like every day. And then Such go, a little sister thing. Yeah. Like. And, I, and I'd go downstairs and, and his room was just, and this is so me now. It's hilarious how, in, how inf influential actually he, he is to me in this way. But his room was all red, red walls, wow. action figures everywhere, creepy stuff everywhere, uh, lots of random arts and crafts. He would make his own sort of boxes, uh, you know, I don't know how to explain it, boxes, just like storage boxes and he would paint them red, make it all creepy cool. and swords on the walls and stuff like that. And stuff like that, images of that in my head, somehow I'm able to like sprinkle that into my music. I can't explain it and why, like, and like I said earlier, watching certain horror movies and all of that stuff, I've been able to sort of find ways to encapsulate how those movies and how being in my brother's basement and all that stuff has, I've been able to pull inspiration from all that and create from a space of that. It's weird that, and I pull, it's all in this one part of my head. Well, it's in your tiny studio. You have action figures too. Yeah, like exactly. They're like creepy little horror ones. I mean, and then literally, your sign is red. Exactly. Yeah. Now you're just missing those little shoe boxes for storage. No, but we'll make those. We'll make those next exactly. time you're back. <laughs> no, exactly. So yeah, I guess, I guess just realizing that I, I've always also had a lot of built up creativity that I feel mm -hmm. like wasn't being released. To give you an example, when I was in high school, I had so much motivation stuff, but didn't know where to put it. So I would literally study the dictionary at the time. Cause wow. I was like, cause I didn't know what else to do with my, like I was so motivated and so sort of ambitious and I didn't know where to put all that energy. So instead I was just looking at the dictionary and trying to learn words to evolve my vocabulary. I should probably honestly do that more now. Cause I feel like even in this interview, I wish I could have like, could be articulating myself better. <laughs> I think you're articulating to yourself great. I oh, can't even I say that word. So <laughs> I said, I appreciate, I appreciate that. But yeah, I feel like to improve the vocabulary, it's something I really value. Mm. So that's what I was doing then. But then when I realized I was, I became obsessed with making music as soon as I started just the whole, just arranging things the process and, yeah, the and process, the process, arranging things and you know, how it doesn't have to be improv. It's not really improvised because you can just edit things. It's like, right. okay, that's not good. Let me edit it like this. Yeah. Let me edit the note like this or the melody like this. I loved the idea that I could just mess around and on this, you know, I use Ableton. It, that's like the software I use. And I just became obsessed and, and immediately I was like, I obviously have to just create. Like, this is my it, thing. It's all I was doing. Yeah. It's all I was doing straight away as soon as I started. Yeah, like that's 10 hours so a day. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna start reading the dictionary also. Just no, so I can seriously? start like, just so I can start like, dropping words like onomatopoeia in like in the middle of an interview. Nothing is more impressive to me. Like, no, there's a lot of things <laughs> that are impressive, cool. but I love to watch interviews of people myself. And, and I love hearing when people are so good at crafting their words. I'm like, oh my God, that's so commendable. Uh, that was a good word. Yeah, there we well, go. Wow. <laughs> there's probably like a million. Watch my next interview and I'm going to link it to you and it's just going to be meetthesaurus.com. But like, <laughs> I'm, I'm saying the craziest, fanciest words. Zombie apocalypse. Okay. Okay. So you're in one. Would you survive? <laughs> Honestly, no. No, <laughs> I wouldn't. Um, I feel like <laughs> I. I feel like I'm. <laughs> I'm like a little baby in a lot of ways. Like, Aww. like I don't even know. But to, the answer is no. I no. mean, I. I just feel like. I want to. You know, have you ever watched shows like Alone or Survivor? Yes, I've seen Survivor. So when I watch shows like that, I always make jokes to people around me that. I would be carried out in a stretcher on day two. <laughs> like I always make jokes like that. It's like, I don't know. It's probably, it's so probably bad to, th to think of myself that way. But like, I just, I, I, I associate myself as like, I'm such a like tiny person. So like when I don't eat, even for one meal, I miss a meal, yeah. I am just, I'm not well. I'm right. not, I need, I need a banana. I yeah. need like, I need like, you know, so in a zombie apocalypse, like if I'm not getting my needs met, I'm not sleeping, I'm mm. not eating, eating because like a zombie's running after me. I'm just, 
it's not it's not looking good for me you know what i love the honesty though it's not looking good i love you being real (laughs) i'm just i'm just being honest as much and by the way that's one thing that i want i wish i was like so badly is you know those those people who go on survivor those people who are so um physically physically and it it's it's both physical and mental you know it's a mental thing too yeah no you're right yeah right it's 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 both but as much as i want to say like oh i would survive a zombie apocalypse i it's not telling the truth i i would be i would be a little bit um i would be reliant i think on other people to really carry the way while i probably you know cry about having slept two hours or something <laughs> like you know what I mean like it's just uh, it's unfortunate I really don't want to be like that though like you had such amazing answers and I'm so excited for this to come out um <laughs> congratulations on your album too can you see me coming out March 14th yep exactly yeah? nice let's go, March, let's 14th, go. March 14th yes. um do you have anything final to say to the fans watching I've said a lot <laughs> <laughs> I've said a lot, but thank you guys for, if you listen to this whole thing, then I appreciate that. (laughs) And yeah, listen to my, listen to my new album because I I seriously think that it's the best project that I've put out. Um, So I hope that all my fans listen to it. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks for watching. This has been Rez, Verda. Bye. Thank you.